Hi, my name is Richard Albert, uh, founding co-editor of iConnect. And welcome to our recurring iConnect feature on five questions. Five questions that we ask to a public law scholar about his, but in this case, her research. And this edition of Five Questions features Professor Caterino Santos Botello, Assistant Professor and Department Chair of Constitutional Law at the Porto Faculty of Law at the Catholic University of Portugal. And so today I'm gonna to ask Caterina five questions about her research and how she conducts her research. And I think you'll find it quite interesting. Caterina, hi and welcome. Hi, Richard. So let's begin. What are you researching and writing right now? Hi, uh, right now I am writing a paper with uh, Nuno Garopa, uh, uh, a law and economics uh, professor at uh, J George Mason University, and uh, in an effort to measure and explain uh, on an empirical basis uh, the dynamic between procedural and uh, substantial amendment rules. Uh, I am also uh, finishing an article for the law journal Diritti Comparati with the provisional title Social Rights Trapped in um, Enduring Misconceptions of the Social State. Again, with uh, Nuno Garopa and, any, uh, and uh, some other Portuguese scholars, I am editing a much needed book on voter turnout in Portugal, um, diagnoses and possible solutions. I am finishing uh, two uh, papers for upcoming conferences in January. One uh, is about uh, one is about the um, universal basic income, and another about the possibility of uh, creating an international constitutional court. Um, in the following months, I will have um, I will collaborate in three book uh, commentaries. Uh, regarding the European Convention on Human Rights, the European Social Charter, and the UN Convention on Rights of, pers uh, of Persons with uh, Disabilities. That's it? <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. <laughs> I'm quite busy. <laughs> so, Katerina, how and when do you write? Do you have a routine? For well, uh, I, I am not whatever. very... I am not very good, Richard, at time management, and I definitely don't have a routine. Uh, I, um, deadlines work wonders for me because um, in the beginning I am still figuring things out, and uh, so I read a lot of scholarship and take little notes on ideas that are floating. And then um, later on, when the deadline is approaching and is becoming more real, um, I think that it triggers my adrenaline, so uh, I can really focus and write very fast. I, I prefer to write at home, here is I'm at home, and uh, I'm not a morning person, so I usually write at night when my kid is in bed. And, um, and then, so beyond doubt, I, I, I still time for my sleeping hours. <laughs> So when did you know that you wanted to be a law professor? Well, uh, at first I wanted to be a judge, but then um, later on I, I, starting, uh, I started to, to get really interested about uh, scholarship. And um, in, in my late teens, I was hesitant about choosing law or philosophy. Uh, I ended up choosing law, uh, but what moved me throughout the law degree were always the abstract, the philosophical, the deep questions and the theory of law. I, I continue to go back to two uh, major sources of inspiration uh, from my pre-graduation years. One is the brilliant uh, Hannah Harent and another the German novelist Thomas Mann. Um, my favorite book ever is Der Zauberberg, The Magic Mountain in which you can trace several discussions about sociological questions, reflections about the significance of time. And then um, during my law degree, uh, it was an article for, from a Portuguese professor. Um, he wrote it in the 80s. And um, this article illuminated me completely. And it was influential for becoming a constitutional law scholar. Uh, the article revisited 
Karl Lovenstein's concern on the magical formula for a lasting constitution. Rogério Soares used the expression constitutional psychosis, which uh, that is when people anxiously turn to the quasi-religious idea of the constitution as if the solution, as if it was the solution to every societal problem. So Richard, to my surprise, many years later, I read your article, The Cult of Constitutionalism, and uh, Martin Logland's idea of constitutional imagination, and Heberle's writings, and I was deeply inspired by that. So uh, my, my latest article, uh, my forthcoming article, Constitutional Narcissism on the Couch of Psychoanalysis, goes way back to my to my times as a teen as a, a, a late teen and to my grad years <laughs> well thank you for that um last question among all of your publications thus far books articles chapters and edited volumes is there one that is dearest to you most important to you perhaps favorite that you would suggest that our viewers go read if they want to learn more about you and your work uh, perhaps I would suggest this last one, Constitutional Narcissism on the Couch of Psychoanalysis, because uh, uh, I have only recently, recently started to write in English, so uh, my main publications are in Portuguese. Of course, if, you, uh, if uh, anyone uh, can understand uh, Portuguese, uh, my main publication is uh, Social Rights in Times of Crisis, but it is uh, my PhD dissertation written in Portuguese. So perhaps I would recommend that book, that, that article, Constitutional Narcissism on the Couch of Psychoanalysis, and another article that will be, um, th that will be available soon that discusses, that, um, that, that talks about the, the challenge that we still face now at times uh, to combine constitutional, constitutional, uh, constitutional cosmopolitanism with constitutional patriotism. I wrote an article about the pros and cons of constitutional borrowing. And um, I really think that one of the main problems of comparative constitutional law approach is its methodological and epistemological uh, foundation and the existence of um, ashamed or invisible uh, cross citation. So I think that scholarship should continue examining the relevance of um, foreign law, international foreign law, international case law, um, uh, foreign case law, sorry, uh, given by Supreme Courts and by constitutional courts. Well, you've given us a lot to think about. It's been a pleasure to talk with you about your research and your work. And when we publish this on iConnect, I will include a link to your paper on constitutional narcissism for our readers to download. Thank you very much, Katerina. Thank you so much, Richard. I hope that some of these considerations were food for thought, and I wish you, Richard, and all our iConnect community a wonderful year. Oh, so thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, and to you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.